It's a story, I think, of an entire period. It's a story in some ways of a loss of a certain kind of innocence in America, and yet of a certain kind of growth. It's phenomenal that in 1959, Ritchie was able to uh, accomplish what he accomplished in eight months. That's a tribute, I think, to the openness of the rock and roll world then. Back then, it was uh, pretty much of a sideline, you know? I mean, they were struggling just to, to make a few bucks, and rock and roll was not the big deal that it is now. It hadn't been accepted yet. So it was possible for blacks and Latinos and other types, you know, disreputable types to come in <laughs> and, and, and make their stamp. And these are the pioneers. The important thing is that rock and roll grew out of the guts of America, that grew out of the working class, that grew out of the, the racial minorities, that grew out of people that had to sing because they had nothing else. This was their claim on reality. And I'm talking about Elvis as much as I'm talking about Little Richard, you know, Richard Penniman and Richie Valens and Fats Domino. And so I was dealing with a part of history of America. I can't open up any subject without eventually beginning to see the politics in it, the cultural implications, the human implications, the psychological, it's all there.